And it is the best possible. It is optimum. The flow time that you get by this algorithm cannot be bet by any algorithm, even if you knew all the future requests. OK, but OK, so uh, this is just showing that how would this algorithm have behaved for the previous example. At this point, the green job has a remaining processing time of two units, while the brown jobs each have a remaining processing time of one unit. And so we would have preempted the green job and scheduled the brown jobs instead. OK, good. Now, of course, this SRPT algorithm has issues, right? And one important issue is fairness. Suppose I have a red job and a blue job, and the blue job is just slightly longer than the red job, right? So which job is going to be scheduled first? The red job, okay? And now, when the red job finishes, another red job of exactly the same size shows up. Which job is going to be produced, scheduled now? Again, the red job, right? Because it's smaller than the blue job. And so on and on. So the blue job, the bichara blue as I call it, is now stuck till we finish all the red jobs that are coming in. And what was its fault? Its fault was that just it was just slightly longer than the red jobs. So it has a huge processing time. It has a huge flow time. It has a huge response time. The red jobs have small response times. The total response time is the minimum possible. Right? I stick to that. The total response time is the minimum possible. But the blue job is getting most of the stick here. And so it makes sense to talk about higher norms of response times as well. Right? So um, if you remember a little bit of your math, uh, if F sub J is the response time or the flow time of job J, then what we are looking at is just the one norm of this vector. We are just summing up this one. Suppose I went for two norms or higher norms, then fairness comes in. And so we would really like to minimize that. Except that um, we can prove, and was proved by a colleague of mine, that there's no online algorithm possible which would minimize the P norm of flow times. It's not possible at all to do. OK, one other popular measure is what's called stretch, right? Um, you would want that a job which is length 100, uh, you know, if its response time is 200, that's fine, provided, you know, a job which has uh, length 1 has a response time of 2, right? So the longer the job, the longer could its response time be, right? So in the same ratio. Again, you know, anything which is interesting here, one can argue, is not possible to... Um, to bound, to not possible to get an online competitive algorithm. OK, um, I'll now quickly go on onto multiple machines, because that's where most of our work has been in the last few years. And I don't have to show really the slide to this audience. Let's uh, now quickly say what the problem is. Right. So here is an abstraction that we work with. Um, we have four machines. Let's say these are the four machines. And um, each one of them already has a queue of jobs that it has to process. A new job arrives, and this job comes to a central scheduler. And now the central scheduler has this task of figuring out which machine to send this job to. OK? Um, I'm going to make one other assumption here. The central scheduler cannot send the job to any machine that it chooses to. Right? These machines are heterogeneous. Let's say they have some security policy issues. They have different software versions, which dictate that a certain job can only be done on some subset of machines. Okay? So let's say the central scheduler decided that this job can, done, can be done on this last machine. Now it would dispatch this job to the last machine. And then it's sort of clear from what we just discussed that the last machine will order this job based on its remaining processing time. So since it is the smallest, the last machine would actually put it in the right place in the queue and actually process it before all others. So now the question is, once I've figured out what the machine that the job goes to, uh, things are easy. But I need to still figure out you know, which machine the job should go to. And here is an example to show you things can get really, really bad. Okay? And this is the last um, tricky thing that I'm going to show you. Suppose I have two kinds of jobs, a red job and a blue job. And the red job can go only to the top two machines. And the blue job can go only to the bottom two machines. There are three machines in this picture. Okay? And now I have the following sequence of job arrivals. At time zero, there are four jobs that come, two red and two blue. OK, what would you do? Well, you don't have enough information. You could do anything, right? You could say, OK, I put those two red on the top two machines, and I put one blue on the bottom machine, and one blue remains. Right? One job will have to remain. Whether it's a red or a blue, I don't really know. So the same thing repeats. 
at time one, at time two, at time three, and so on and on. And you will have a stack of jobs left, some red and some blue. Right? You might be very clever and say, okay, I want exactly half red and half blue. Fine. At time t, you will have some R red jobs left and some blue, B blue jobs left, where R plus B is exactly time t, is exactly t. Why? Because at every time, remember, we had one job remaining. And so one of these two quantities, no matter what your algorithm is, is going to be at least t by 2. Okay? So what I'm trying to show you here is that no matter what algorithm you design, you are going to be messed up very soon. Okay? Now, the adversary says, hmm, you have at least t by 2 red jobs left. I am going to just give you red jobs from now on. Right? It gives two red jobs. And remember, there are only two machines that the red jobs can go to. So from every time, from t onwards, it gives two red jobs to schedule. And there's nothing you can do, but you have to schedule those two red jobs. And you keep doing this till time L. Okay? So now if you look at your algorithm, what is, of, look at your schedule, what is the flow time of the schedule? And now I'm going to think of the flow time definition as outstanding jobs at every point in time, some. Right? So note that from the time t to time t plus L, and I'm thinking of remaining. Right? And so that my total flow time is at least t by 2 times L. Okay? Now, you can, I, and if, if I knew the future, I knew that at time t, there were red jobs going to come in, what would I have done? From time 0 to t, I would have gotten rid of all my red jobs. And I would have left only the blue jobs. And always be an adversarial example, which will mess up the algorithm. So what do we do now? And... Um, in the last few minutes, let me quickly tell you um, uh, our major contribution here. Um, we look at this model, which was already there, which is what's called resource augmentation. And we say, well, our algorithm doesn't know the future. But can I tweak the model a little bit? Can I, for instance, say that my algorithm, it doesn't know the future, but it has machines which are slightly powerful? Now, you might not like this, right? Because you might say, OK, uh, how can I say that my machines are faster than and then adversary machine. Think of it slightly differently. Think of it as, I am comparing against an adversary whose machines are slightly slower than mine. Okay? I have the same machines. I'm not saying go buy new hardware. I'm saying, you know, just for the purposes of analysis, let me compare with an adversary who knows the future, but let's give him slightly less powerful machines. Let's say 10% less powerful. You can choose this fraction. If you want 1% less powerful machines, fine. OK, and now let me tell you what our algorithm is. And it's extremely simple. Um, we are going to, when a job arrives at a central scheduler, mm -hmm. the central scheduler is going to decide which machine it has to go to. And how does it decide that? It will just follow the greedy policy. And what's the greedy policy in this case? It would say, OK, if I put the job on machine 1, what would the increase in flow time have been? If I put it on machine 3, then the competitive ratio of my algorithm is, is just slightly more, 1 plus 1 by epsilon. Um, th that's a competitive issue of my algorithm. Okay, so uh, I'll finish. I'm out of time. Um, online algorithms are a very powerful way to address um, our lack of knowledge of the future. Uh, everything that you are doing, it can give whatever requests it wants. It will make you look bad. And uh, uh, so uh, algorithm designers have been trying to balance this by giving more power to the online algorithm or less power to the adversary. So there are lots and lots of models of this kind. And uh, we have been studying this resource augmentation model for scheduling problems. And what I showed you, and there are many other results that we have of this kind where we also allow rejection of jobs and stuff like that. Uh, it's a powerful way of handling um, problems in the scheduling domain. Thank you for your attention.